Hey everybody, welcome back. We are back in the garage working on a new project for a friend of mine. Uh, Silverado's out of the garage. Uh, we just got back from Streetcar Takeover. That was a blast. There's a video out on it. But what we have today is the 2005 Chevrolet SSR. And this is a former co-worker, good friend of mine's truck. This is the one that we did the long tube headers on and everything. But uh, I never really talked much about, about this truck. So anyway, I kind of did some research on it. And uh, what I found out was they were built between 03 and 06. And the 03 to 04, came with the uh, LM4, I believe, the 5.3 out of the, the pickups. And then the 05 and 06 came with the LS2 out of the, uh, you know, your GTOs, your Corvettes, things, things like that. Um, it is pretty much kind of a concept car that came to life from GM um, in the, time that they built this thing they only produced about 24,000 just a touch over 24,000 of these vehicles in the 2003 to 2006 year range so they weren't really popular back when they came out but they're really starting to grow uh, even more popular now 15 years later um, so what we've got going on we have the typical GM stepper motors in the gauge clusters that are bad. So we're gonna be putting some new uh, stepper motors in there. Um, he mentioned that his transmission linkage to cable has come apart, um, which is kind of annoying because we put a brand new shift cable in this thing a couple years ago. And uh, I think he has a door handle on the passenger side that's not working correctly. So let me show you what we've got going on. So, I ordered a stepper motor kit. These are the uh, X27 168s. Uh, the kit came with a needle puller offer, a solder sucker for when you're breaking them loose, and this soldering iron, and it's junk. It's, I got this same kit when I did the gauges on the Silverado, and this thing didn't work. It pretty much basically caught on fire. Don't use it. But anyway, yeah, I really like this thing. It was kind of, it's kind of fun. It's fun to drive. Um, you know, the long tube headers we put on it from OBX, they sound really good. Um, I drove it the other night. The thing handles really well. Um, it's kind of a heavy truck. It's got the uh, retractable top. It's a hard top, so it runs on hydraulic. So you have a hydraulic system on this truck and things like that. But uh, yeah, this thing handles great. Um, it, it feels really tight. It's extremely tight handling car. Uh, I actually climbed underneath this thing to see what it had for a rear end because I wasn't sure if it was a solid rear end or if it was a uh, uh, independent rear suspension. Uh, turns out it has basically the same rear end package uh, suspension wise as you'd find on a fourth gen F body and everything. But uh, like I said, pretty cool truck. He, uh, they, they do kind of have their own problems. He uh, put the Eagle uh, wrap on it. The uh, paint kind of does the typical GM stuff. You can kind of see where it's kind of kind of starting to fade and stuff like that. But uh, anyway, um, what I've noticed about this thing from driving it and playing with it and working on it is like it was a great concept and everything. And you know, you've got a good solid engine. I think this has the 4L65 transmission, which, well, it's a 4L65. But uh, you know, the body and everything's really good, but it's like they almost kind of skimped on the interior a little bit. The interior is just a little bit frail, in my opinion. So you kind of have to be careful when taking things apart and, and stuff like that. But anyway, um, we're gonna get started. We're gonna have to, pull the dash out of this thing. I mean, you to get the gauge cluster out, you have to pretty much pull this entire whole dash out to get to them. Um, so anyway, we'll set up and uh, start tearing things apart. So stick around. <laughs>
So, excuse my fumbling here. There's a nut right there and a nut right there. And there's not a straight way to get onto this. So what I'm using is my trusty quarter inch drive, seven millimeter wobbly boy. So anyway, let's get this thing done. complicated than it needs to be so big connector right there on one of these deals um, I need to check the voltage on which pins these are because I have kind of a test thing set up for my Silverado and I don't know if the pinouts are the same on this as they are the Silverado so I'll do a little research if it's any different I'll kind of let you know what's going on but anyway clusters out now we can kind of start pulling this dude apart and go from there okay so there's a couple clips right there right there right there right there and then there's two on the bottom right there and right there now you need to be careful because your odometer reset whatever you want to call it button is right there so if you get to prime on this thing too much you can hit that and break that i know that's kind of a problem on the silver autos but anyway uh just heads up on that okay so the uh the outside bezel is actually kind of a two-piece it's your main body and then you've got this body which i'm not sure if this was supposed to be glued on or not but it's not it comes out as you know clear piece in the the bezel so set that aside um the only thing that worked on this instrument cluster was the tachometer uh, it's really smooth speedometer you can hear the stepper motor kind of chewed up same with the temp and the uh, fuel and the definitely the oil pressure so anyway we're going to get these pulled apart and go from there These things definitely have different sizes your rpm and your attack or your rpm and your speedo are different sizes of each other so the rpm is the smaller one the speedometer is the longer one I venture to say that the uh, temp fuel and oil pressure are all going to be the same same uh, lengths and they seem to look that way so all your needles are off these tools are really good because they don't mar up the surface so anyway we will set these aside somewhere safe and then we will figure out how the back comes off and go from there
the inside of it. Looks a lot like the Silverado's. Anyway, backing plate. And the key is just take your time on separating these things. Um, back plate right there. Set it aside somewhere safe. And so, as you can see, here's your your stepper motors and everything looks good and see what's back there it should be pretty easy to knock out so anyway I'll get the old soldering gun warmed up and we'll go from there okay the trick to busting these things off is to heat it up just as long as you need to and then get off of it and let your little sucker do the trick, do the work. wires in and everything they just snap in place and what we do is just just a can of solder Getting the needles to kind of line up so they don't have my thing to test it where you can just turn it on and keep recycling the power. Uh, plug it in. Before you plug it in, you always turn your needles around a little bit. That way, when you plug it in, it'll do a full sweep and kind of calibrate itself like that, and uh, everything will be right and correct. So, what I'm going to do is kind of clean everything up, and then we're going to put it all back together and get it bolted back in and see how it looks. All right, so I have a working set of gauges in this thing, which is great, and he's gonna be really happy about it. So, on to the next project. So, tack works. Uh, you know, we got temp gauge, fuel gauge, everything like that. So, I am pretty happy with the way all 
of these turned out. So I guess now it's on to the next one. So anyway, we'll probably go take this thing out for a spin tomorrow, maybe tonight, I don't know, just to make sure the speedometer works. But anyway, we will catch y'all later.